On Edison, we have two processors with two OSs. The first one is an Intel Atom dual-core processor running at 500 MHz with a general-purpose Linux called Yocto. That's the one we've been using so far. But there's a second processor, an Intel Quark running at 100 MHz with a real-time operating system called Viper. It works as a microcontroller Unix. Let's see how we can work with this MCU. We'll code in C, but we can't compile with the GCC toolchain already installed on Edison. We need a different toolchain with libraries and headers adapted to this MCU. Let's download it. You can install the toolchain on your development PC running Windows, Mac or Linux. There's a full setup, we're running Eclipse provided, if you like Eclipse. There's a very good documentation covering uh, sharing I.O. between the two processors, two OSs, and code samples for the API. I'd like to compile on Edison itself using regular make tools, make files, and not Eclipse on my laptop. As Edison is a 32-bit Linux system, I download the 32-bit SDK. So I unpack everything. You see there's a lot of files, including a full Eclipse setup, but I'm not interested in that. I only want the toolchain itself. First thing to copy the toolchain folder, but also the zip file containing the base firmware, headers and libraries. We'll need all that to compile our project. Now let's go on Edison for the rest of the setup. First, we have to make sure we have the core utils package installed because we need the GNU version of DD and not the BuzzyBox version of DD. Then we can go to our project folder and unzip the firmware files in our project. It's important because we need the headers and also the base firmware. We need to edit uh, one of the shell scripts to change the library folder. We are now ready to build our project. Just type make clean, make on make install. The result is not a binary you can execute directly on your Linux. It's a firmware you have to upload to the other processor. The firmware for the MCU will be loaded from the lib firmware folder during the boot of the first Linux system. Just like it would with any Wi-Fi card, for example. Now the tricky part. We have two independent OSs, but shared I.O. So we need to allow the MCU to access the I.O itself. Today we want to access PWM to control server motors. So we had the correct script file to the started scripts to allow the MCU to access this specific I.O. Look at the doc, it's explained. You'll have to use a different script if you want to use digital or analog I.O.
So we'll uh, reboot the Yocto system and it will automatically update the firmware during the boot procedure for the Viper system. After rebooting the system, we can uh, look at a serial port that is used to communicate between the two OSs. The firmware was correctly uh, uploaded and the code is running on the MCU. Let's look at the code. We have two headers. The API is limited, so two headers are more than enough to cover everything. In our code, we want to access PWM0, corresponding to digital free in the Arduino extension board. First, we use PWM configure to set the duty cycle on period in nanoseconds. It's not like SIL on GS. Here we have to get the values ourselves. We have to know the specs of our servo to have the optimal period and range of duty cycles. The values were for my little servo motor. Note the print to serial output. There's nice debug feature, so look at the API doc for details. On note the sleep function with a multiple of 10 milliseconds as argument. 10 milliseconds is the MCU cycle. 